There was a time when Reno was always in the news, when celebrities, millionaires, and giants of industry made headlines just because they went to Reno. That was when divorce was scandalous and hard to get, except in Nevada. The state was establishing an economy and a brazen reputation based on activities that other states frowned upon. And that was when Reno was becoming the biggest little city in the world. Nevada had a fantastic reputation, if, if you want to call it fantastic reputation, it, uh, as an easy place to get a divorce. And uh, that reputation was worldwide. Well, they were, they were very candid in the divorce era. This was known as the divorce business, and they made no bones about it. It was a mainstay of the local economy, and this was clearly recognized. It was said that Reno was the only town where lawyers met all the trains. Uh, it was said that matches are made in heaven, lighted on earth, and put out in Reno. For five decades, the first half of this century, the rich, the famous, and thousands of others came to Reno to take the cure, or as Walter Winchell put it, to get renovated. Ties that had become too binding broke easily in Nevada, and Reno was a mecca for the aching hearted. The Reno Cure not only helped give the city its racy reputation, but drew sophisticated clientele to the area, and thus lent Reno a cosmopolitan air beyond what any young western city could reasonably expect. Neither Nevada nor Reno planned to become a divorce capital, but once the value of the business became apparent, Nevada nourished it. Easy divorce had been common on the frontier, and territorial Nevada's liberal divorce grounds and six-month residency requirement were typical in the highly transient western states and territories. Though a couple of other states were known as divorce mills before the turn of the century, Nevada didn't attract any migratory divorce until a couple of celebrated cases cast the spotlight on Nevada in 1899 and 1908. The timing was significant. When the Comstock began to go down in the late uh, 1870s, that uh, depression lasted uh, past 1900. So there was a, over a 20 year period of uh, a very difficult time for Nevada. The uh, population, which was never very high, went from uh, 62,000 down to 40,000, which percentage wise is a terrific decrease. And uh, Nevada was, was ready for a, uh, any kind of a, uh, an economic stimulus, and divorce provided one, at least part of one. There's really no economic uh, development, there's no agriculture to speak of, and you have nothing to fall back upon except uh, an isolated mining boom of some sort. And uh, divorce and gambling became very important. By 1910, the rush was on. Hundreds of divorce seekers were arriving in Reno. Lawyers warmed up to the new possibilities, and the business community found a new market providing goods and services for the temporary, wealthy residents. 300 divorces were granted in Nevada that year, mostly in Washoe County. The divorce business was becoming a tidy supplement to the economy, but more importantly, it was making Reno famous as the divorce capital of the world. Many political and religious figures, however, criticized Nevada for making a profit on easy migratory divorce and blamed the state for the rise in divorces nationwide. It is a shame. It's an outrage on your state and on this beautiful city to make it famous, first of all, for its divorce colony. You need homemakers. You are getting home destroyers. You are the best American manhood, the finest of American womanhood. You are getting the matrimonial misfits, the worn out rich man and woman whose money spent wrongly has poisoned all the finest elements in character. Women who have lived so as to make the line between their conduct and legal adultery a very narrow one. My friends, can you expect to build up a great state with homes out of this? Nevada divorce became less easy when the political progressives won in 1913 and the legislature extended the residency requirement for divorce to one year. Nevada wanted commercial growth, though, and the very next legislature reinstated the six-month provision. The state's voters affirmed that decision in a referendum. 
The Nevada divorce business got another boost when Mary Pickford went to Minden to divorce Owen Moore in 1920. She and her lawyer, Patrick McCarran, were accused of skirting the law, and the divorce was challenged by state authorities. But America's sweetheart did get to marry Douglas Fairbanks, and the scandal didn't hurt the local business at all. One of the major reasons for coming to Reno for a divorce was not only the fact that it was easy, but the fact that it was discreet. You didn't have to wash your dirty linen in public. You didn't have to say anything embarrassing that your friends and neighbors would be clucking their tongues over. All you had to do was go into court and murmur something kind of vague about metal incompatibility, and that was sufficient. Nevada had very relaxed divorce grounds for divorce. For instance, most of the grounds for divorce that we used at that time was uh, extreme cruelty entirely mental in nature. Whereas, for instance, in New York, their divorce laws required that they prove adultery of all things. It was the only ground for divorce in New York at that during those years. And Massachusetts had very strict divorce laws. Pennsylvania had very strict divorce laws. Connecticut New Jersey, some of the eastern states. So the people who lived there who had the money because it was expensive and needed a divorce quite often came to Nevada. In 1927, the pressure of competition from Mexico and Paris moved the legislature to reduce the residency requirement for divorce again from six months to an unprecedented three months. The Short-Term Divorce Act opened the gates 48 divorces were granted in the first 48 hours as those who were halfway or more through fulfilling the six-month requirement suddenly were eligible to take the cure. When the Depression hit in the uh, late 20s and, and 30s, Nevada needed something to generate business. So two things happened in Nevada. We got the gambling law, which permitted open gambling, and we got the divorce law, which permitted divorce premised upon a six weeks residence and uh, easy grounds. That, uh, that did a lot of good for Nevada economically. Now, marriages were also increasing very much, but uh, uh, the marriage was really just a day, two day event type of thing. And uh, it wouldn't pull in as much money as the divorce. Nevada was going through the Depression, as other states were, although Nevada never felt the Depression as greatly as many states. But uh, nevertheless, the money that came from the divorce trade was very welcome in Nevada, probably more so than it would have been in a lot of other states. Although the gambling would prove to have more impact over time, the six-week divorce produced an immediate, dramatic result for Reno. That year, 4,745 divorces were granted. In 1930, Nevada had granted about 3,000 divorces. Washoe County was enjoying what has been called the golden age of divorce. Sally Zanjani's father, George Springmeyer, was a prominent attorney. Well, he had clients from all walks of life, but Nevada divorce in that era really did have kind of an upper-class cast to it. People who were genuine, permanent Nevada residents were seeking divorces, whatever their financial circumstances might be. But you can readily imagine that a woman living in New York, perhaps with a job that she couldn't afford to lose, very poor, with a number of small children to take care of, couldn't possibly have afforded to come out to Nevada to stay for six weeks and get a divorce.